Welcome, in this video I'm going to walk you through the first two units of the module Reports and Dashboards for Lightning Experience. Part of the prerequisites for the Lightning Experience Reports and Dashboard Specialist Super Badge. I wish Lightning Experience was branded something shorter. In this video and hopefully throughout this entire playlist, I'm going to be talking through a lot of the business concepts behind the activities that we're going to be doing in this. So that way, when it's time for you to actually do this super badge, you feel like you have a little bit more of an understanding of what the business reasons are that we're actually doing this stuff. Feel a little bit less like you're going through clicking random buttons, hoping to get the right answer. And ideally my absolute craziest most fantastic daydream would be that the content in this video actually helps you to feel more confident when you first get your job and being in that new environment and being successful there. Along the way, I will actually walk you through the steps necessary to complete the hands-on challenges, so you'll get to that too. Before I get to that, I do wanna say if you have not yet read the book Trailblazers by Mark Benioff, please go to the description, click the link, sign up for a free account for a month from Audible, Listen to Trailblazers by Mark Benioff. In it, he describes how he believes Salesforce has become such a successful company. And for him, that starts with the values and the values create the culture and the values create value. And in the book, he describes a lot of the big picture things that an incredible CEO like Mark Benioff thinks about a lot. And it will give you a really good foundation for understanding how values animate what happens in business. However, when you get to reports and dashboards, what we're really doing is talking not about the values of the business overall, but about the strategy. How is the strategy being influenced, being, being implemented, and how successful is the company being? And it's really important to understand strategy. So after you've read Trailblazers, I recommend continuing to do other activities to expand your awareness of how businesses measure their effectiveness. Um, I'll put a link in the description also to Salesforce's earning reports. If you've never listened to an earnings report before, I highly recommend doing this. You will find a lot of terms that you're like, I've got no idea what this accounting term means. And that's totally okay. At the same time, you'll hear big picture conversations around, hey, we had this line of business was pretty successful. This line of business had some headwinds that is polite speak for challenges. And you'll hear all sorts of other conversations around the more tactical sides of how business operates at the big picture level. Let's get to this first unit, introduction to reports and dashboards and lighting experience. This does an actually pretty good job of describing why a person you know, what's it like to create a report, creating reports for leadership, what are the things that they're interested in. I just want to share two stories, though, before we get further into this. One is about a cousin of mine who's a great guy, runs a fish market in Pike Place Market in Seattle, and they sell a ton of fish. You know, there was a conversation that was had about, hey, are we tracking, like, which products are selling? You know, we, they sell fish online, they sell fish from the market. Um, they, they distribute it all around the world, millions of dollars of sales a year. Are we keeping track of how much we're selling and how much where our profit and loss margins are and all that stuff? And the answer is no, like we're not. The thing is, is that you'll find within a lot of businesses that maybe have been successful in doing a lot of sales over the past many years, they don't feel a need to have that sort of tracking. And even, so I'm saying this because you might find yourself in a new business that just recently adopted Salesforce. There's gonna be some people in there that are really excited about the promise that putting all of their data in one place could have for them and the information that could give them. There's gonna be other people that are going to be resistant and be like, I don't care about a reporter dashboard. I've got a sense as to how much we can sell or I have been doing this for years and it's been successful. So why do we need to change? In a certain way, those people, you know, they do have a tremendous insight. And so they are very well qualified to, to make that point. On the other hand, a strong business and a strong economy can be successful. A business in a weak economy all of a sudden really has to figure out where it needs to pivot to. So a business is going to be healthier if it really understands where it's succeeding and where it's failing. Keep in mind that sort of fish market mentality, though, that you will probably run into 
when you're creating reports and dashboards. The second story is one that just happened to me. I'm part of a team that creates content for our internal sales teams, and we're trying to figure out which modules are successful, which modules are unsuccessful. I created a report that I was very proud of. I shared it to my leader. I thought it was gonna be fantastic. My leader came back to me and was like, hey, this is good, but we don't have a sense of what's trending here. Is there a way of adding that in? And I was like, hmm, yeah, there is. And I created a custom formula to add into the report. Woohoo! That is something that's super important to realize is that you can create a report with all of the available information and your leadership might look at it and be like, uh, this really isn't going to help us make a decision. We need something else in here. And you got to keep in mind that you're going to have to use formulas and there's advanced formulas that are come up later on this. So keep both those things in mind as you're creating reports. The fish market mentality, just the people that might not be interested in reports and dashboards. And so if you are going to be creating something, make sure you find out exactly what it is that they're interested in. And also the other part of the reality of creating a report, showing it to somebody and then being like, um, we need to add more information here because even though this is what I originally asked for, I now realize that I need more information. I want to explain some of these things in a little bit more detail. A report is really our most basic level of just taking the different data that's there, filtering it based off of, you know, certain criteria, grouping it, making summaries, very important. Where they become really powerful is when you take the report and then you import them into dashboards. And the, one of the big benefits of dashboards is you can take information from the same or different sources of reports. So that's really important to keep in mind and that usually dashboards, usually a report just shows one slice of information. By taking that information and putting it into a dashboard, you're able to come up with something that is a lot more useful. This idea of a running user, I wish there was a better term for this, but um, this is the person whose security settings determine which data is displayed in a dashboard. If you think back to your security information, you'll remember that you only want to give access to information that is necessary for the person to do their job. You don't want to give more access than necessary. So this idea of having a person who sets the security settings for the dashboard ensures that more data than is necessary is not revealed. A dynamic dashboard, and then that would be open to anybody. Report types, I feel like we don't really talk about this so much, in, in my opinion, but these are a fantastic solution for when you have lots of different types of reports in the same area, and then you create a report type, that, that makes it much easier to create future reports. It determines which fields and records are available for use when creating a report, this is based on the relationship between the primary object and its related objects. So this is just, it's really important to, to keep in mind that you can create report types that then make it much easier to create reports for everybody else. Okay, so jumping ahead to the next unit, create reports with the report builder. This unit covers lots of super important concepts, filters, cross object filters, filter logic, this is stuff that might not make, just spend some time with this, it will start to sink in. Um, it's very powerful and important to being able to show just the right bit of information that the people are asking for. And it's really incredibly valuable because you wanna make sure that you are presenting appropriately. So that way, you know, if you think about it, reports and dashboards is how you as a Salesforce administrator show up to the leadership. So you wanna make sure that your impression that you're making at that time is really positive because these are the people that you know make the choices about who gets hired, fired, promoted, and it's beyond that. It's just really important to like making an impact in the company. A good report and dashboard could really inform how the company changes and evolves. So make sure you get this stuff um, down. Okay, let's jump ahead to the hands-on challenge. Um, for your challenge, Ursa Major Solar updated their website last year. CEO Sita Nagapan Alvarez wants to know how many leads are coming in from the web. Create a report for Sita that shows all web leads. Now, I should say, it's good to know how many leads are coming in from the web. It's better to know how many leads from the web converted to closed one deals. 
right? How many of those leads converted opportunities and how many of those opportunities got closed? Because if you're just getting a ton of leads, but the leads aren't getting converted, then that's not very valuable, right? Like, great, we got all these leads, but they brought in no cash. Like, that's not helpful. So keep that in mind. Um, and let's just go ahead and go through this exercise. So the report type is leads. So let's go over here. Reports. New report. Report type is leads. Click continue. Standard filter, and we're going to do a create date and all time. So we do create a date, and then we're going to do all time. Click apply. And then we're also going to do, that's the only standard filter. So we're going to take off the one that says show my leads. I'll just put all leads here. And the fields, we're gonna do lead owner, lead source, and rating. Rating would sort of help give you some of that information. Lead owner, lead source, and rating. And we can remove street. And then the filter, we're gonna filter the lead source to just be the web. So we'll click filters and on a lead source. And we're just gonna do equals web. Click apply. And we're gonna name this report web leads. So click save and run. Web leads. Do not say which folder to save it into. I'm just gonna leave it in private reports because um, it didn't specify. But when you're actually creating a report, you're probably gonna wanna create it in the public folder so that way people can see it. This is sort of cool. I mean, it shows us the, the rating. Some of these are not filled in, but again, what we'd really want to see would be the lead source, and then which one of these leads actually became opportunities and closed, but we'll deal with this for now. That should do it.